as an athlete, what's a better rush for you? Is it hit, is it nailing a, a sports center worthy kind of a dunk, or is it like draining a three when the shot clock is winding down? I was still in the shot clock winding down for sure. Hmm. Like what is that like? What's it feel like inside when when that when you do nail it? I mean, it makes the first of all. I mean, we play for the fans, so you make the fans go crazy. You just bring the energy, and everything starts rolling. Now, as far as like, so I was reading, read up on you, listening to analysts, they're calling you one of the best athletes, the most athletic players in the league right now. Like, how much of that is natural ability, and how much is it you've had it develop since? Uh, I mean, it's just uh, pretty much knowing uh, the small things, small details. You could be as athletic, you could be the best athlete, as long as you don't know the game or you don't read the game the right way. It's not going well, but it's going to just kill. Like which what what do you think what is your skill set? Like what is your I guess main weapon? When they say put a scattering report on you, what do you think is number one to look out for? I mean, it's crazy how for now though, it's like be aware of him driving into the rim every single time. That's pretty much I'll say the scout report. And the way I see people playing me, they worry about me getting to the rim because most of the time I get to the rim, it's either a score or the foul. So that's the main focus. I mean, is there one so far, one dunk or one three right now that you say hey, I remember that one more memorable than the others? Comes to mind. I mean, I mean, I'll say uh, career career wise, I'll say my first NBA point was a three point. Was that like your welcome to the NBA moment when you hit that, or? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I was kind of, I wasn't, I was hurt for the first couple games, and then the game I came back. Oh. Uh, my first shot was a three point. So, like, when when did you realize? Do you remember the first time, whether it was a, a kid, whenever that you realized hey, I'm really good at basketball? I'm gonna really do this for a living. Was there one moment that you really that really kicked in, or was it a gradual development? Uh, I'll say going to my my sophomore year in high school. What do you remember? Like, what do you remember most about that? Uh, just being ranked number one player in the country, things like that, and just competing against every top player in my class or every top player in the country. And looking back at it, how I used to really compete and have fun doing it. So that's pretty much it. Now you look if you look back at your senior year in high school now and give yourself a scouting report, what would you say you have you had to work on and what were your skills and how have you improved since then by work? No, I mean, I'll say since high school, since my uh, senior year, I really never I'm never a senior in my in high school. I went from a junior to ignite. Uh I'll say my junior year, that was my last year in high school. I'll say obviously. When you're in high school, it's a lot of things you don't need to have. As long as you're faster, bigger, compared to certain people, and actually smarter compared to most of the high school kids, that's the advantage. But once you get to the professional life, it's more about brain. Because some people are slower, some people are fast, some people have the ability to shoot the ball, some people don't. But... The things that makes them great is the way they read the game, the way they understand the game. And I feel like that was just the biggest adjustment that I had to do. What have you learned? Uh, I mean, from a Golden State Warriors, a dynasty team, you've got Steph, you've got Clay, you've got Draymond. What have you learned the most like from these guys? What have they taught you? I mean, I don't, I haven't really got to sit down and like just start talking about things like that because our first year everything was rolling the right way we were we won a championship my rookie year second year things got a little bit out of control and then now I'm in my third year and I and we try not win the championship but obviously just the most thing is just to that it told me just trust in the process you know you never know when your time will click. I mean, because I always put a lot of work in, and obviously, it won't show. It won't show the right way. 
that it's gonna take a minute, but if you put your head down and keep working and just keep believing every day and and trusting the process, obviously things gonna change, and that's that's why being the main focus with those guys, because for them to win those championships, for them to actually start playing together the right way, it took a little minute. So, and they're the guys that done everything. They won four championships. They've been through everything. So just trusting them and listening to them every single day. I think that's the biggest thing I ever kind of sit down and just talk to them. And and once I went back home and just thought about it, oh, they, those guys, was right, they were right. What's a, what's a regular workout routine like for you day to day? As far as practice, training, recovery? I mean, the day, days like day, days we don't have practice, I have a trainer. So I usually just go to, up to the gym and just work out on pretty much everything. And we watch film and correct certain things. Uh, and then the days we got practice, we don't usually have practice that much. Uh, but those days, just being around the team, uh, working on plays, working on understanding different teams, how they play, how we going to guard certain players, it's pretty much it. So what, what's some of your workout like? What is What would you say your training program is like with a trainer? The training program is pretty much working on my handle, uh, tying up my shooting ability, uh, reading the game perfectly. Because there is always growth. There are always part of, of me to grow. So just pretty much working on those things. Uh, yeah. What what would you think? Is there one move, one exercise, one part of the regimen that you say this has really helped me elevate from my rookie season to where I'm at today? It's pretty much just uh, working on things that gonna help me on the court, like knowing where I could score easily, uh, and knowing how many counter, how many move I need to be my man. And obviously, we don't work more than three or four moves because I don't really need those because I'm faster than a lot of people. So if I just work on one move that I'm going to work every single time, uh, that's pretty much the main focus. And then just correcting my shot every day. I'm trying to improve uh, my shooting ability. Uh, and I feel like I have improved so much. So, I mean, it's been a process, but you got to trust it. Well, how long, I mean, how many shots do you take a day? I know it's like kind of, uh, I guess, a legendary that Steph shoots maybe 500 a day. Do you watch that? Do you take a little bit from that? Do you just, how much do you? We two complete different type of players, but obviously every day after practice, Steph stay there and start shooting because he on his own one side of the court. Uh, that every time after practice, we know Steph going to shoot right there. So, I mean, I've been watching him for the past two years and three now. His routine is always the same. Uh, uh, obviously, it's different for me because I'm not working to shoot like Steph because there is never going to be anybody that's going to shoot like Steph. Mm -hmm. It don't matter how you work. It don't matter how you perfect your shot. It's just Steph is just one of them ones that you don't really find anywhere. But obviously, me and my trainer, uh, it's all about just uh, the mechanic of my shot and be more consistent because I feel like if I do that, I won't miss shots because I have a pretty distant shot. So that's that that be a main focus. It don't matter. It don't matter how many we took a day, but as long as I'm consistent, even if we take five shots, as long as I'm consistent and the shot still looking the same way, that's all that matters. How physical is the NBA? What's like I said, most people may look at it and just say, hey, it's north, it's up, down, up court, down court. There's a lot of physical, a lot of hitting. Like how how, phys how more physical is it than we realize? I mean, obviously I had a little experience because I played for my country one one day, FIBA. And I would say obviously FIBA, it's really physical, but the NBA kind of – it's just certain people. You don't really find – everybody being physical in the game. And and most of the time, whenever it gets physical is when, let's say we play Sacramento. It's like, it's like a rival game. Let's say 
like the game is today, it's a game where two people get injected and now the game become physical, but it's not, you don't really see it every day. It's just I've been a matter of time, but it's not like an everyday thing. What does your body feel like after the game, after 48 minutes, after when it's all over? You feel, are you I mean, sore? Are you tired? Or are you just fatigued? How does that help? Uh, I'll say kind of tired, obviously. I mean, it don't matter what, even when you're in a better shape, but it's definitely you, you tired at the end of the game. Uh, and after that, you just need a better treatment, and then you got to get some rest. But obviously, after every game, the body kind of tired. So what do you normally do? What's your normal routine after as far as recovery? Ice baths, just massages? What would you? Uh, mostly, especially the way we do it, if we have like back-to-back -back games or because it depends on how many games we play. Back-to-back, -back, we usually got people that are just going to work on us, like recovery, uh, flash, uh, things like that. And then ice top. Uh, and then I'll say just eat the right way. Uh, and then get some rest at nighttime. So that's pretty much my routine. Do you have like a typical post game uh, meal that you normally that you always eat? Is it a is it a ritual, or do you, can you mix it up? I be I be mixing it up. Uh, I usually don't like eating before or any or after the game right away because I don't know. That's just how I'm used to it. But obviously, before the game, I usually get a small meal like something light, and I like rice and chicken. So most of the time, it's pretty much rice and chicken. Has your diet changed at all from uh, from high school, from year one into year I mean, high school, obviously high school, it was different. I mean, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. And then you're still even younger. You don't know what you're doing. Like whatever you eat, it's not going to affect you the next day. It's not going to affect you at all. So. And then the game wasn't as fast as the NBA because the game in the NBA is faster. You got to control certain things that you eat because you're not going to be able to be out there running, especially our team. We play fast. We don't play slow. So high school, obviously, I wasn't. I tried because I wanted to be a professional. And then at the young age, I was looking to, like, what a professional eat, what do they like, how did they do this. And that did not happen until my sophomore and junior year before I went to Ignite. That's when I realized that I got to at least try to eat better every day or sometimes whenever I get a chance. Like what was the first uh, introduction, like your first uh, change? Like did someone show you or tell you, you got to cut this out and try this? Or did you just figure it out studying on your own? Or I mean, I kind of study on my own. And then obviously I knew certain NBA players and then you know you always gotta be a sponge at the young age. Even now though you always gotta stay being a sponge and then I usually just ask certain people I knew, uh, what do you guys do? What's your routine? How do you eat? Like what's the things that kinda help you to go through a game and not get fatigued and just feeling good while playing. And then kinda explain to me. I mean I didn't have money like that at the time to like choose and peak or get a shift. So, but I try, I try my best to like eat good and just keep going. Now, can you cook? Can you do your own meals? I mean, I could cook. I'm, for a little time I was with my parents, I grew up watching. Uh, they let me do it. They let me try a couple times and I learned from that. And then, but I get lazy, so I don't really, I only choose and pick the day I want to cook. <laughs> so, so what's like your specialty? If you had to pick one thing, what would you? No, I don't really ask. I, I could do, I could do a lot of things. I could definitely do a lot of things. It's just a matter of how I'm feeling. Now, when it comes to off season, when it comes to days off and kind of recovery, what do you do to unwind when there's no basketball today? I mean, I I really don't like staying away from basketball. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I usually just go to the gym with my trainer, work out, or be at home, um, playing with my dogs. I got like three dogs. What what kind? A raw roller, uh, and two Frenchies. And then I usually just play a video game, two K, or FIFA. So that's pretty much what I do every day on my. And then I'm into like making beats. I try. I'm not good. I try a little bit, and then 
now I have like a teacher who come at home every day and help me to learn how to play the piano. So that's pretty much that's what I do every single day on my days off. You play anything yet? Do you have a song yet that you're really good at? Your your signature song? Uh no, nah, not really. It was just one song that was in the book, the book that usually helped me to to learn certain things. That's the only thing I know how to play so far. I mean why yeah. why piano? Why what, what, what I, love music. I love music. I really I'm really into music. Uh and I wanna it's things I wanna be one day. I mean, I wanna be a producer, I wanna do things like that. So I, I'm really into music. I like music. Uh and I don't know if you know anything about Afrobeat. Uh it's getting bigger and they have different type of beats. And most of the time, if it's not the lyrics, it's the beat. So that's why I love music. Hey, I also noticed on your Instagram of uh, you uh, hanging out with Real Madrid one time. Is that ever, is that a part of the youth soccer, a big thing for you as well? I mean, uh, I had an offer. I had a chance to go do some things with Real Madrid. And obviously it's, we call soccer, football. And it's something I was really into it. And I wanted to see what is it to be a soccer player. Because mm -hmm. certain soccer players want to know how is it to be a football uh, a basketball player just for one day. So I wanted to know. I wanted to know how is it to be a professional player, uh, a soccer professional player. And so once I got that offer to go do it, I was excited and I wanted to go do it. And I signed it. It wasn't like a real contract. It was just like a, like something they made up to look like a contract to be a part of the team. Uh, and it was with different uh, people in different uh, sport, different things in life. Yeah. Are there any skill similarities between the two sports that you noticed or didn't expect? Uh, not at all. I mean, I grew up, I grew up playing soccer, soccer and basketball at the same time. But I stick to one thing, and it was basketball. So, but I grew up playing both. My question was when I another refer to your athleticism before. Is there anybody that you look at right now and say, "Hey, look, that guy really got some moves. That guy, he's got some athleticism." I would say, uh, athletic wise. Mm, the kid from which my cousin, uh, mm, Portland, sharper, something like that. Okay, I think so. Yeah, uh -huh. he's super, he's super, super athletic. And who else? I'll say Zion Williamson. Mm -hmm. Zion, super athletic. I mean, skill wise, I don't need to go too far. I see the skill guy every day, Stephen Curry. So I don't really need to. I get a chance to guard him every single day in practice. So you cannot tell me there's too many people that are so skilled as Steph Curry. What thing? What does he do that no one else really can rep, uh, match? He's fat. He could shoot from whatever. He could finish against anybody. But you don't you don't see too many people like that. I mean. There is not. You could at least be good at shooting, but you're not as skilled as Steph Curry. Some people are great at shooting. They can shoot from far. Some people don't shoot that far. Steph will shoot from far. He will attack against any defender. He will pass the ball. He will finish at the rim. So there's just so much things that he has that I get to witness every single day. Was there any one moment that you got you got the best of him or do you remember? <laughs> I mean, uh, obviously, I always. I mean, we all athletes, we all players, and we all compete. I mean, I get to do certain things sometimes where it's like, oh, wow. And then, obviously, with him, you, you never get tired because it's the things he does. It's just nobody else does it because the things you see in the game, that's just in the game, but we see everything in practice. The men don't stop running. Like in practice, you just don't stop moving, and it's better six uh, second that 
you think you're still next to him, guarding him. By the time you just tap a little bit, he's out. And by the time he's out, if you catch the ball, you're way too late. Just that one second. So that's how that's how great that guy is. So, and he work every single day. You work hard. You, that that did not just happen overnight. Every day I see him, he's like, what is it, thirty five? And all this, the way he's still moving out there, the way he work after the game every single day or the, or after practice is different. Does that rub off on the other players? Mm -hmm. Work ethic. Does that rub off on everyone else? Or when you see it, when someone else sees it, a rookie sees him just out there. Hour after hour, do you like? I mean, the only the, the only person I really see and consistent of watching Stephen Curry every day is Brandon. He just had a great game the other day. We lost, though, but he had a great game. This is one of the guys I really see him every day, watching Steph work out, watching Steph lift, watching Steph tie his shoes. So he's always focused and watching, and I really like that. I really like the fact that he does that because there is no one. That you could pick up your brain from better than Stephen Curry. So, yeah. The last question the last I do question. have, and this is also from your Instagram. How much work do you put in each week for or each day for a pregame outfit? <laughs> I don't. So it's crazy. I don't. I don't really think about the stuff that I'm gonna put on the day before. I just go to my closet and just pick the die and die and I just put it on, and it happens to come out uh, looking good. So I don't really, I don't really waste a lot of time thinking about what what outfit I'm gonna wear for the game. Mm -hmm. It's just whatever it happens, and obviously it looks good. So yeah. Like what's if it's not you? Who's who's the best dresser in the NBA? Nah. It's a couple guys that actually do good. Uh and obviously they got stylists and things like that. But I'll say from what I've seen, uh Shea Alexander, uh Kyle Kuzma, uh different other people. Uh but those two really kinda do it.